What's up guys, Vulcan here, and today we're diving back into Biomutant to talk about every class and breed you can be in the game. So today Game Informer released a video that gave some new insight into the character creator and all of the options that we get to choose from. Now after watching the video, I think we're in for an awesome time creating our little beast that we're going to get to explore this world with. So let's get things started with the breed we can choose from. Now, your breed is going to change your base stats slightly, but it's your mutation that will give you a chance to specialize your character. So the first up is Primal. Now, this breed is all about agility and being able to move quickly. It does lack intellect, so most of your attacks will be physical rather than special or psychic. Now, looking at the stats on the right-hand side, we can finally have a good look at what we can expect to see at launch. And those stats starting from the top are Vitality, Strength, Intellect, Charisma, Agility, and Luck. And Primal looks like it's the basic type of breed that we've seen in most of the trailers so far, but we do have a few others to go through. So next up is the Dum Dum, which has huge boost to strength and a small bump in vitality, but it does have reduced intellect. This seems like it's your typical bruiser type of breed. Then we have the Rex. Now the Rex gets a decent boost to vitality and key energy, but it loses a chunk of melee damage. So this one's going to be more suited for special attacks. Next up is the Hyla, who seems to have almost identical stats to the Primal, with just slight changes in intellect and vitality. Now the description claims this one is much more tough and resistant, but there really isn't any stat difference that I can see. Next up is FIP. Now FIP has massive increases in the intellect category, but this one does lose a ton of health and armor. So this one appears to be heavily geared towards players who want to use psychic attacks and special abilities rather than melee or ranged. So if you want a mage style character, the FIP is probably going to be the one for you. And lastly is the Murgle. Now the Murgle is all about working a conversation and bartering with huge boosts in charisma. So if you're someone who loves to specialize in social aspects rather than fighting, this is definitely the breed for you. If it is possible to do a no kill gameplay throughout the entire Biomutant game, this will probably be the breed that you want to stick with. Now, as you guys might have noticed, each breed has a different look that represents what they excel at. Now, the physical breeds are thicker, they're more broad-shouldered, bigger arms, and the higher intellect ones have bigger heads because bigger brains, right? Pinky in the brain style. And the charismatic breed has a friendlier face. Now, after you select your breed, you get to select your mutation, which adjusts your attributes using a quadrant system. Now, this will also affect your appearance. So, you'll move your cursor or your thumbstick around this circle system to choose what you want to specialize in. You can see it greatly changes the stats on the right hand side of the screen. So let's say you want to go in all in on intelligence. Then your mutant, like I mentioned, is going to have a massive head because their brain is so big, like Pinky in the brain. If you go all in on strength, then the mutant will have broad shoulders and thicker arms. Full agility will give you long arms and make you more aerodynamic. Charisma is going to give your mutant a more sleek and smart look. So you'll basically be a con man, which is great. And like I said, there is a massive variation on the stats on the right hand side. So changing your mutant is going to be really key to figuring out what you want to be in the game. Now, once you've chosen your mutation, next up is resistances. And this is how much resistance your character will have to conditions such as heat, cold, radioactivity, and biohazard. Now, changing this is also going to adjust the fur color on your right arm, depending on how far you go into a certain resistance. So full on biohazard will give you a green arm, while radioactivity will give you a purple arm. It's small, but still noticeable. And honestly, we aren't sure what type of condition was going to be the most prevalent. So I'll probably just leave mine in the center for some default, or maybe go a little bit into biohazard because I feel like that one is going to be something we might run into more in endgame considering the tree of life is being poisoned by oil. So now that we've chosen our race, our mutation, and our resistance, we can finally get around to choosing our appearance. So here you can choose your fur color and your pattern. Now there are quite a few options from the look of it, so someone like me who loves to spend a lot of time making my character will have enough to tinker with, and there also is a barber in the game, so if you don't like your character or you ever want to change, you can go do that super quick. Okay, so the next one up is big, and that is your class. And these all come with their own special abilities, their strengths, and their weaknesses. So like if you prefer range combat to melee, this is gonna be where you choose something like that. Also, if you pre-order the game or buy the DLC pack, you can also start off as a mercenary class, which is a samurai, so that's something to keep in mind if you really wanna get that samurai style look. So starting from the top, we have the Deadeye, which is a rogue type class that comes with a perfect reload perk. 
and this perk allows ranged weapons to reload instantly and your next magazine is granted plus 20% damage. You have the Commando, which is an elite combat soldier. Looks like it's a heavy gunner style character. And notice you lose some armor with this class, which is kind of interesting, as well as some of the other classes. It seems like most of them lose armor, not entirely sure why. But this Commando special perk gives a plus 10% damage boost to ranged attacks. And next is the Psy Freak. This is a hardcore psychic class that has a skill and a perk. Now the skill is called Spark Ball. This unleashes a lightning ball wherever you're aiming and the perk increases your energy regen by 20%. Next up, we have the Saboteur, and this class is apparently all about covert ops and explorations, so like a stealthy sabotage style gameplay. And this one gives you the ability to dual wield, so you can equip two different one-handed melee weapons, plus have a reduction to the cost to dodge. So this one seems like a ninja style class, so if you're someone who really likes covert ops, this is definitely the one for you. Now lastly is the Sentinel. This one's tanky and has a perk that increases your base arm by 10 points. It's straightforward, it's a meathead, absolutely love it. So going through these, I think there is enough variety here to really have something for everyone. Now myself, I'm really kind of drawn towards that Psy Freak. I really like the idea of kind of building around that spark ball or ball lightning uh, style build and just carving through things. Plus in my last video, I talked about the fire trails and I feel like something like a shaman style character where you can build around the different elements would do well, but I'm not entirely sure. Obviously, we haven't seen the game so far. But my second after Psy Freak is probably going to be the Deadeye. I feel like that one would be a really good fit for me as well. I like kind of perks that build around never having to reload or refreshing magazines and things like that. So Deadeye might be my second choice. But I definitely want to hear from you guys what class and breed and race or whatever do you guys want to play as. So that wraps up the end of this video's deep dive. And honestly, I'm really excited at the level of depth you can build your character and how certain decisions are going to change your appearance as well as prepare you for the game itself. Now, one play style I definitely want to see if it's possible is a gun mage. I really love the idea of flying all over the place, blasting things with dual guns, mixing some magic and special attacks in there as well. It worked well in Wilson. I bet it'll do great here. But beyond that, I definitely want to hear from you guys. So is this enough depth? Do you think they should have added some more? Also, like I mentioned, what class and mutation are you guys leaning towards? I want to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time.